ways, I suppose, of converting uh, this uh, SIG X2 uh, to a CNC operating machine. I hope you, uh, you enjoy what you see here. Okay, so um, I've got some uh, insulation tape, actually it's electrical insulation tape, it's very tough. Just on here and onto here because it's a bit of a pain actually trying to get this off the screw. You can do it and I'll demonstrate afterwards how it's done but uh, this particular case I'm just, it's quick for me just to put a bit of tape on here make sure no shavings gets into the ball screw and um, I, what I've done I've already cut this off with the angle grinder as you saw just now. I faced it off put a center drill in and now because this material is so hard, <coughs> because this material is so hard and it is, you know, sort of protruding or stuck out from the end of the chuck, you know, a good uh, four or five inches there, actually nearly six, no, between five and six inches actually, um, and it's uh, 16 mil diameter. Um, it will tend to bend or flex if I didn't uh, have some support this end. Uh, also it would chatter and um, it would probably end up bending the bar. So you have to support it and I'm supporting it with what they call a live centre. This uh, cone or centre uh, here actually rotates with the material. There's a, a bearing inside here. So this is why this is called a, a live centre. If this just uh, was put in the tailstock here uh, and didn't turn, that's called a dead centre. Okay, so um, now I'll, sh I'll start to machine this up to this point here and um, I'll show you how tough this damn stuff is. Here we go. Easier the material is cut in now um, because now I've broken. Well, I've, I've there's the hard material down to there, so I've just broken through to it to the, the softer material, but in the center it's even softer, softer again. So it is a little bit like a samurai sword. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliberately leave this slightly rougher uh, finish so this got so this has something to grab onto and uh, I'm not going to get any slippage there
So that actually took, you see the time there? 5 minutes 51 seconds. So, uh, Gwen can actually uh, be quite efficient in uh, cutting these sort of things out. That's 12 millimeter of uh, aluminium and it's, uh, ooh, it's uh, about 70 mil square. So uh, the feed rate was, um, <clears throat> let me see uh, if I can remember what it was. You can see that uh, I'm running, I was running the program at 100% and the feed rate from memory was 10 millimeters a second. So that's what 10 millimeters a second looks like uh, running a CNC router and um, a depth, the, the, the depth of cut was 0 0.5 millimeters uh, each, each time. So uh, it took 20, 24 cuts to actually do the 12 millimeter, but you can see that's, that's fresh off the machine. It is near perfect. I mean, that, you know, that's straight off the machine. Yeah, it's got a couple of burrs on the edges, but uh, it's very, very clean. And you'll notice that the the shavings uh, that come off these uh, CNC rotors, when you when you run them at the right speed and the right feed, the shavings come off cleanly. Uh, but you do need to evacuate them uh, with either air or uh, some method. Or sometimes you can use a vacuum as well, but I prefer to use air because it keeps the material and the tool cool. Plus I use um, WD-40 as a lubricant and cutting aid. And it makes a damn good one too. <laughs> a picture or in this case a video can tell a lot of, about a story or uh, a piece of work or whatever you're doing than what an explanation can. way of cutting a thread on mass. A little bit of lubricant, WD-40, wonderful stuff. A good tap, a good cordless drill and the right size hole. <laughs> course these are the uh, should we say the the flanges or mounting blocks uh, for the uh, stepper motors extensions uh, for the stepper motors. Uh, stepper bit sort of operates like this. This particular one is the Z. Um, what I've done is that they are a common design but they are three different sizes. Uh, and actually in this case it's this is the um, Z. This one is the, um, the Y and this one's the X. Okay this particular unit is the, uh, the Z 
uh, just happens to be the largest. Uh, so you can see its construction is very, very solid and very, very square. Uh, I don't know if you can see the inside of that. I've actually ma machined um, slight flanges down inside there, so this will go down so far and stop, and it's absolutely square, as you can tell. Um, so those those are the holes I was just drilling and tapping. Uh, they line up perfectly with this, so this perfectly fits in like so. Uh, but now what I have to do is um, to uh, drill drill for hole. Well, actually, I'm going to leave that till much later because I haven't actually made the uh, the Z axes uh, as yet. Um, so I want to get this up to a stage where uh, the last piece of the, the puzzle then, uh, which would be bolting this onto uh, each axis. Uh, so what I'm going to do, my next job now, is to, um, on the four flat areas here, uh, drill a clearance hole and then uh, uh, drill a um, into this block here and thread it. Uh, and then countersink here so I can put. I don't have them here. <laughs> so I can put these uh, countersink uh, Allen head um, screws uh, in on each flat, like so, like so, on each flat, um, on both ends. <coughs> really that's all required that's all that's required for this they, they will do the job quite nicely I mean these are not exactly a press fit but they're a nice tight fit in there uh, they can't go anywhere they, they're on a, a ledge as they go down in as you can see they fit perfectly um, and so you just need something to lock them into position uh, really they are just taking the um, the weight of the the, the motor really um, yeah, so, all good. Okay, so what I require now, and I've set this up to, to do this operation, is I have a 4mm hole in here, and I'm going to put a 5mm thread in it, um, but I want a clearance hole in this outer part, and I want the threaded part in here. So I've set up now, and I've set the depth gauge here, to um, cut the, um, the distance of this outer sh shroud then. Um, a clearance hole. So that's what we'll do now. And there we are. You can see the clearance hole there now on all of them. And it's uh, done with a very, very simple jig. And of course, we're cutting aluminium, so uh, it's quite safe to do so, so long as you, you have the material trapped trapped in such a way that it can't, uh, gr you know, if it gets grabbed by any means by the drill, uh, it's not going to fly out anywhere. Um, and it's quite safe to do it this, this uh, technique then. So there we go.
Now this operation now is just getting rid of the burr on the inside. Simple as that. 